Batman created the Ultron of the DC Universe and it killed him. Batman plans for any eventuality. It's how he stands toe to toe with the superpowers of the DCU. He's even got countermeasures to deal with other heroes if they ever go bad. But what happens if Batman were to go too far? Well, he's got a plan for that too. And it involves a superpowered robot that not even Superman can take down. Unfortunately for Batman, he doesn't remember making it. And when the failsafe goes rogue and launches a surprise assault on the Dark Knight, no one is safe. Batman destroys the Justice League. Years ago, the villainous Ra's al Ghul launched an attack on the Justice League that saw each of its members taken down with elaborate and individualized punishments designed to exploit their weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Kyle Rayner, the Green Lantern and artist, was blinded, taking away his ability to visualize constructs. Superman was poisoned with red kryptonite that had intense and unpredictable effects on his body, even making his skin invisible and causing excruciating pain. The Flash was struck by lightning speed seizures. But how could an enemy learn so much about each of these heroes and design such personal assaults? The answer to that was grim. Batman had designed intricate plans to deal with every hero just in case they ever went rogue. The heroes were eventually able to escape, but when they discovered that Batman had created those traps, the Justice League's trust in him was shattered. The members gathered to vote on whether Batman should remain in the League, but before the results could be presented, the Dark Knight resigned. He knew that the team could not be effective even if one member no longer trusted him. Following those events, Superman confronted Bruce in the Batcave. What's your contingency plan for yourself? What's the plan to take down Batman? Bruce's response was the Justice League, but that wasn't enough for Superman. How does the League take down the man who's planned for them? In a world where Batman knows every move, who can stop Batman? This is the story of how Batman tried to answer that very question. But before that, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on to never miss an upload, and smash that like button for some plot armor today. Batman's Failsafe Fast forward to present day. One of Batman's oldest enemies, the Penguin, was out to murder Gotham's richest citizens. His master stroke would come at the fundraising gala where the Gotham elite were all gathered together. Penguin crashed the party and announced his plan to kill the rich with a deadly gas. Unfortunately for him, Bruce Wayne was in attendance and Batman's partner Robin had already dismantled the gas attack. With his original plan foiled, Penguin had his henchmen cause havoc. Batman confronted the Penguin, but when they came face to face, the villain revealed himself to be the shape-shifting Clayface. Luckily for Batman, during his last encounter with Clayface, he injected the villain with a formula that turned his clay into an explosive. But before he could test out the new weapon, tragedy struck. While Robin was getting the partygoers to safety, one of the henchmen fired his gun. The bullet struck Robin through the neck. Batman abandoned his fight with Clayface and cradled his partner. He would not let Tim Drake die like his old partner Jason Todd. Nobody dies today, he told himself. As the Batmobile rushed them to the hospital, Batman removed Robin's body armor and costume so that Tim could be treated without compromising his secret identity. Then, Bruce Wayne rushed his adopted son into the hospital where he could do nothing but wait. Later in the same hospital, Batman confronted the Penguin. The villain revealed that he was dying and that his plot was a final grand statement. But that was only part of his plan. Penguin explained that he had already called the authorities for his master stroke. Now that there were witnesses to Batman's presence in the hospital room, Penguin swallowed a pill and heaved in pain. The villain's mouth foamed and the heart monitors went flat. The Penguin was dead, and Batman had been framed for the murder. As word of Batman's deadly act spread across Gotham City, an unknown alarm activated in the Bat computer, awakening the ultimate Batman countermeasure. Only one person knew that this countermeasure existed and could override it, but with Alfred Pennyworth dead, there was no stopping what happened next. Deep in the caverns beneath the Batcave, a red light blinked. A mysterious pod rose from the ground. Failsafe was online, and it would stop at nothing to eliminate the rogue Batman for good. Days later, Robin was on the mend. Back in the Batcave, Batman reflected on the many young people who risked their lives for the sake of his mission. While he was lost in thought, Failsafe approached in silence. At the last moment, Batman jumped away, barely avoiding being crushed by Failsafe's deadly fist. Batman fought back, but the robot anticipated his every move. Bruce knew he was outmatched and planned his escape. He activated the Batmobile and fired a grappling hook to latch onto the car as it sped off. As he was dragged off to safety, Batman threw a pair of explosives, but it was no good. The battle moved to the streets of Gotham City. Nothing Batman did could slow down this mysterious assailant. Injured and bloody, Batman was at Failsafe's mercy. 
As the android readied the killing blow, it was stopped by the appearance of some of the Gotham Knights, Batman's younger allies including Signal and the Batgirls. But rather than being relieved, Batman was horrified. No! The thing's too much! He'll kill them! Failsafe quickly dispatched the Batgirls, but after they were knocked down, the android left them alive and returned its attention to its real prey. Signal tried to distract Failsafe as Robin helped Batman into the Batmobile. He strapped Bruce into the passenger seat and then drove to get medical attention. As Robin retreated, Nightwing arrived on the scene. In his classic overdramatic fashion, he used the Batmobile as a ramp for his motorcycle and shot into the air. As the bike came down, Nightwing backflipped away, pushing the cycle into an explosive collision with Failsafe. Not even fancy motorcycle stunts could stop the rampaging robot, which leapt from the flames before crashing to the ground and creating a shockwave that knocked Nightwing and Signal down. In one of the satellite bat caves, Dr. Leslie Tompkins awaited Bruce's arrival, but was met instead by Failsafe, who demanded to know where Batman was. The Dark Knight had changed plans, knowing that Failsafe would anticipate Batman going for help. In the car, it dawned on Batman that his robot must have been his own creation, created to stop him if he ever went too far. If he could not remember creating this android, then another hidden part of himself was responsible. They wouldn't understand the lengths I've gone to. I've softened, surrounded myself with children. But in my early days, God helped me. In my early days, I went too far. Failsafe was familiar, but an aberration, like a wrinkle in his mind. He had done this to himself. Bruce retreated into the shadows of the Batcave. These desperate times called for desperate measures. It was time for another Batman to take control. Batman of Zur and R From the shadowy depths appeared the Batman of Zur and R, a seemingly psychotic version of Batman clad in purple and yellow. Only one man could have done this to me. A failsafe for a failsafe. He needs answers so he falls aside and I take over. Just what was the Batman of Zur and R anyway? This was a backup personality that Batman had created deep in his unconscious mind as a last resort in case any villain ever attempted a psychic assault and he was mentally compromised. This manic version of the Dark Knight first appeared in the classic tale Batman R.I.P. In that story, Batman was drugged and driven to the brink of madness. Sir and R took over to continue the fight while the real Bruce Wayne personality recovered. This was pure stripped-down Batman, free of Bruce Wayne. This Zurinar version was created after vigorous mental experiments and in the early days pushed Batman to the edge of his moral code. It was this Zurinar personality that developed Failsafe. It was pure desperation that drove Bruce to call upon this backup personality. But he needed to find an answer on how to stop Failsafe, or as the Batman of Zurinar put it, your Batman has called on me to save everyone. Unfortunately, to ensure that an evil Batman could not stop Failsafe, Zurinar erased the memory of how to stop it. But this darker and more violent Batman believed that he could take on the robot with his ferocious style of combat. When Failsafe assaulted the Batcave, it was an all-out war. Batman fired wrist-mounted missiles, attacked with a bat lightsaber and mini grenades, but nothing damaged it. As the battle moved upstairs to Wayne Manor, Batman used Robin as a distraction while he snuck up from behind. Failsafe fired missiles at the boy and warned Batman, Fighting me just causes your family pain. Batman of Zurin R corrected him, not family, soldiers, and the war was not done yet. As the mad Batman fought with all his might, Bruce tried to claw back into control. Robin Nightwing and Batgirl were not soldiers, they were family. Robin was his son. With that, Bruce regained control. He grabbed Robin and jumped through a nearby window. This thing wanted Batman and he would ensure that Batman would be the only one harmed. Bruce resumed the battle and Failsafe continued its brutal assault. Batman collapsed to the ground as visions of his family danced before him in the flames of his mansion. As he drifted into unconsciousness, a glimmer of hope arrived. A cold wind quashed the flames. A voice from the shadows warned, I'm going to need you to back away from my friend. Superman was here. With his power, surely Failsafe was done for. If only. Superman's arrival might have seemed like a ray of light, but it was only a brief flicker because Failsafe was armed with kryptonite daggers. Superman tried to fight from a distance, but the killer robot stabbed the Man of Steel with its kryptonite. But Superman didn't come alone. The entire Justice League was on the scene. Green Arrow, Martian Manhunter, Hot Girl, and Black Canary engaged Failsafe, giving Batman enough time to remove the kryptonite from Superman. 
As the League faced off against the robot, Robin and Green Arrow dragged the world's finest to the Justice League's jet. As the jet flew to Superman's Fortress of Solitude, Failsafe set his sights on Gotham. It knew that Batman would eventually come to save the city. Back in the jet, Batman awoke and struggled to his feet. Failsafe was going to follow Batman wherever he went. And with Superman dying, the world was at risk. He instructed Robin to continue onto the fortress and get Superman healed. He opened the airlock and then Bruce turned to face his son. He placed his hands on Robin's shoulders and said, Don't worry about me. I'll survive this. With that final farewell, Batman jumped from the jet and fell into the ocean where he sank into the depths. As he began to lose consciousness, his Justice League alert signal flashed. Before passing out, he saw Aquaman coming to the rescue. Batman Goes to the Moon Two weeks later, Batman awoke in a healing pod in Atlantis, and a lot had happened while he was unconscious. Gotham had fallen. Failsafe's drones patrol the city streets as Batman's sidekicks were hunted down and captured. With the Bat family neutralized and other heroes barred from entering, Gotham had become a free-for-all for criminals. And all the while, Failsafe continued looking for Batman. It would only be a matter of time before he checked Atlantis. Atlantis prepared for war, but before an army could be raised, Failsafe assaulted and took Aquaman hostage. It demanded to know where Batman was hiding. The Atlantean guards caved and led Failsafe to where the Dark Knight had been recovering. But he was already gone. The next battle wouldn't be below the sea, it would be among the stars. In the Justice League's old watchtower base on the moon, Batman was preparing a trap. Failure might very well cost him his life. Batman had little time to spare. Failsafe was already on the moon and destroying the watchtower. Bruce scrambled to gather what he needed. In the armory, he found what he was looking for just in time. A big old alien ray gun. Batman hid in the shadows waiting for his moment to strike. Then zap! Three quadrillion watts of alien electricity charged into Failsafe's back. Unfortunately, the results were not so dramatic. Failsafe wasn't even knocked to the ground. But Batman did manage to break through the outer casing, which he hoped would allow him to get into the more delicate insides. If only he could get close. Failsafe wasn't about to let that happen. It attacked, forcing Batman to race through the watchtower, even leaping through space to escape more quickly. Failsafe knew every move Batman was going to make. But Batman also knew how Failsafe thought and had prepared one final surprise. Bruce stepped into the Justice League's teleportation pod right where Failsafe wanted him to be. With a click, a shield slipped down over Batman's face. The two enemies stared each other down. Failsafe knew something was wrong. A massive blast tore through the watchtower. Batman had reversed the teleporter's polarity, causing the tower to explode and beaming Failsafe from the moon back down to Earth. As for the Dark Knight, he was left floating through space. He called for the League jets, but it was no good. Failsafe had already destroyed them. There was no escape. No ships, no teleporters, just cold death. 240 million miles from home with only 14 minutes of air, no transportation, and no Superman to save him, things were looking pretty bleak for the Dark Knight. Surely there was no way for a mere mortal to make it to Earth from the moon without a ship. But if Batman has any superpower, it's that he never gives up. Instead of submitting to certain doom, Bruce got creative. He used the compressed gas in his grapple gun to propel himself toward one of the damaged jets. It couldn't fly, but its extra oxygen supply gave him 12 hours of normal breathing. And since he was a master of all forms of martial arts, Batman knew techniques to regulate his breathing and make it last even longer. Batman continued digging for spare parts and salvaged the jet's booster rockets. He would ride the engine back to Earth, but he could only accelerate in three-second bursts without passing out from the G-Force. Do it enough times with recovery between bursts, and he could reach 40,000 miles an hour and survive. That last part proved to be the problem. Batman's body could only take so much. After a few high-speed bursts, he passed out only to awaken as he was already falling through Earth's atmosphere. And at the speeds he was moving, it was downright deadly. The Batsuit was designed to withstand high temperatures, but his oxygen mask wouldn't make it. Luckily, Bruce had some extra fabric. Told Clark, trunks are a good idea. He used a laser to rip off the layer of flame-proof fabric around his waist and wrapped it around his face. One problem solved, but was he going to be able to slow down enough to survive the impact? As the heat of his descent burst the air around him into flames, he released his cape's glider. It wouldn't be a painless landing, but it might slow him down just enough to walk away. Batman crashed into the Arctic ground through the heat of his suit melting the snow around him. The Dark Knight crawled out of his snowy crater and began his grim march to the Fortress of Solitude. There was no time to rest or catch his breath. Failsafe was coming. Batman vs. Failsafe
In the fortress, Superman awoke upon hearing his friends crash landing. He was not fully healed, but he was ready to fight. When Batman arrived, Robin demanded to know what was going on. Batman's explanation was simple enough. I fell from the moon. Might as well have said he was just taking a walk in the park. Robin was left speechless, which allowed Batman to explain his plan. Superman would act as a distraction while Bruce worked on a weapon that would end this once and for all. Superman flew into action, this time prepared in his anti-kryptonite suit. He was still not at full strength though, and Failsafe was evenly matched. As they wrestled in the snow, Failsafe revealed that he had more tactics to use against the Man of Steel than just kryptonite. Superman might be an alien, but he still has the same pressure points as a human. Failsafe's robotic tendrils cut through Superman's armor and pinched down on a nerve in his neck. It triggered an involuntary release of heat vision which shattered his suit's visor and made Superman vulnerable to the kryptonite radiation. Back in the fortress, Batman put his desperate plan into motion. On the watchtower, he had damaged Failsafe's armor, leaving the machine vulnerable in one tiny location. Now, Batman could access its programming through the breach with nanobots. A normal computer virus wouldn't be enough, but with advanced Kryptonian technology, they might be able to subtly shift Failsafe's personality and make him less violent. Tim wasn't optimistic. What if Failsafe didn't stop? They were thousands of miles from home. Bruce put on a brave face. This thing is designed to defeat Batman, but it doesn't stand a chance against Batman and Robin. Naturally, a line that epic demanded a dramatic suit-up moment to go along with it, and now that they were together again, the dynamic duo charged into battle. They fought valiantly, but Felsafe was able to take everything they threw at it and deliver it back twice as hard. And desperately, Batman plunged the nanobot virus into Felsafe's circuitry. As the nanobots go to work, the robot's machinery sparked and seized up. With its voice crackling and glitching, Felsafe asked what Batman had done. A small thing. An additional bit of programming. Compassion. It's what separated us. I may be a dark knight. I may be vengeance. But I still care. And now so do you. Failsafe twitched and quivered and ran from the battle towards Superman's fortress. It looked like the plan worked, but they couldn't let their guard down. There were too many dangerous items in the fortress. Before the heroes could even move, Failsafe trembled back out, holding a strange new weapon. Failsafe was still fighting. I need to eliminate Batman, it announced. Failsafe lifted the alien gun. Robin begged the machine to stop. Batman knew, though, that there was nothing left they could do. The only thing that would stop Failsafe was the end of Batman. Bruce turned to his son. Tim, it's okay. As soon as the words left his mouth, a beam of blinding red light shot from Failsafe's weapon and connected directly with Batman. Robin screamed in horror. There was nothing left of Batman, only a pillar of smoke where he just stood seconds ago. Robin falls to his knees in tears. He shouted, You were supposed to have compassion! Failsafe's response was simple. That was compassion. With that, it destroyed the weapon. As Robin collapsed, Failsafe's internal lights turned from red to blue. Batman eliminated. The program was ended. With no more Batman, there was no more use for Failsafe. Without another word, the machine took to the skies and was gone. But somewhere far away, a bloodied and beaten Batman was lying in an abandoned alley. Soon Batman would awaken and find himself back in Gotham, but not the one he knew. This was an alternate world without Batman. Failsafe's compassion was to grant Batman a new mission and a new city to save while still fulfilling its programming to terminate Batman as a threat. Now, Bruce needed to find a way home. But that story continues in the pages of Batman, and we'll all have to wait to see how the adventure unfolds. For another insane Batman story, check out our video on Batman stealing the Flash's powers and becoming Red Death.